Madam Clerk, might please get verification that the audio and video are working in the neighboring courtroom. All right, thank you. I do have verification. There are headphones on the table in front of Mr. Brooks should he uh, choose to wear them. I see he's reading from a book at the moment. I do need to make a record that this morning, although Mr. Brooks was not raising his voice, there were repeated interruptions. Um, he wanted to debate rulings that I made after the fact um, just this morning alone. About 26, 27 different times he interrupted me or spoke over me. Um, once I made a decision on his motion to dismiss and his request to recall um, a witness, he then asked if I, uh, for written findings. I denied that. Um, he then asked for what law I was uh, following. I indicated I wouldn't explain that further, that I already made an oral ruling. He asked for um, uh, a stay. He asked for dismissal. All of those things I either denied or said I wouldn't answer uh, specifically as it relates to the request for an interlocutory appeal since I would not be the judge or uh, court to which uh, a request would be made. That is something that would be made to the Court of Appeals. Um, and uh, although I would have authority to grant a stay pending appeal, there is no appeal that's pending. Um, I gave Mr. Brooks multiple opportunities to stop talking. I asked him repeatedly to stop interrupting me. I advised him that if he continued, he would forfeit his right to be present in this courtroom and would be taken to the neighboring courtroom. Um, I believe I gave that warning at least twice. Um, of course, this comes on the record before this court over the first 15 days of trial where Mr. Brooks has, by his conduct, forfeited his right to be present on a number of occasions due to his conduct. I do appreciate that this morning he didn't yell at me, he didn't raise his voice, he didn't speak in an angry tone, uh, but given the history in this case leading up to today and knowing what this court needs to get through in terms of whether he has any witnesses um, or whether he intends to testify himself, there's a very important um, colloquy I need to have and an advisement of his rights that I need to go through and I simply am not able to do that with him constantly interrupting me and then not respecting the oral rulings that are made. Of course, at any point in time, Mr. Brooks can ask to be brought back over to this courtroom under Illinois versus Allen. Of course, he needs to uh, pledge that he is willing to conduct himself consistently with the decorum and respect inherent in the concepts of courts and judicial uh, proceedings. I, of course, have repeatedly, even without him making such a pledge, brought him back into the courtroom where I felt a sufficient time has passed. Um, and he, at many times, has been able to conform his conduct. Uh, I would note during the vast majority of the uh, testimony that was provided during the state's case. He was in the courtroom, um, if not during the entire time. He was able to cross-examine witnesses. Um, we had a couple of issues during the testimony of witnesses he called. And of course, last Friday was, in my opinion, probably one of the most challenging dates, uh, challenging days, I should say, to date. Um, it's my hope that we can continue with Mr. Brooks um, in this courtroom um, at some point today, I'll certainly invite him back over uh, when I get through these advisements. Um, Mr. Brooks, you have been muted. I will make that, uh, put that on the record as well. I will unmute though and ask Mr. Brooks because you did not answer the question previously. Other than you potentially testifying on your behalf, do you have any other witnesses present at the courtroom, at the courthouse to call today? I need an answer to that question, sir. Okay. 
the jurisdiction that we haven't addressed when I was just over here or since I've been over here? Are we addressing subject matter jurisdiction? I'm going to mute him just for a second. No, I'm not going to address subject matter jurisdiction. This is a common ploy by Mr. Brooks. When I attempt to go through certain things with him, ask him questions, he tries to divert our attention away to subject matter jurisdiction. I have issued a written decision on that. Um, he has not filed any type of interlocutory appeal regarding that. Um, this court's position is there is subject matter jurisdiction, and I'll deny um, verbally and orally at this point his request to dismiss the case based on a lack of subject matter jurisdiction. Mr. Brooks, I will be asking you a couple of questions. I do need a response. I am unmuting you. Um, do you have any other witnesses other than yourself available at the courthouse to call this morning, meaning um, now? This is the uh, jurisdictional challenge right here. So are you going to address subject matter jurisdiction and prove it for the record or not? So I've asked Mr. Brooks twice now whether he has any witnesses to call other than himself. He has declined to answer that question. Sir, if you fail to answer that question, I will interpret your failure to answer that as a no, and uh, there you will lose the opportunity, you will forfeit the opportunity to call any other witnesses on your behalf other than yourself. So I will ask you one last time, sir, do you have any other witnesses at the courthouse available to testify right now? I'm not getting a response at all. Am I unmuted? You've been unmuted, sir. Well, me muting you doesn't affect you being able to hear the court because yes, yes, uh, that only yes, mutes your yes. audio coming into this courtroom. I confirmed already Why that my audio muting to begin with? the um, that is simply a misstatement. I confirmed with the bailiffs that the audio Why? and visual were Why working. Is my audio? Why is my audio muted to begin with? because you interrupt the court repeatedly. So I'm going to ask you uh, yet another way, even though for three times now he has failed to answer this court. You indicated last week that you would like to call your mom as a witness, Dawn Woods. Um, you were provided with notice that the state would not be assisting with that in any way. You indicated when that was said that if you wanted your mom to testify, she would obey you and she would be here. So I trust that you've made arrangements for her to be here. Are you going to call Dawn Woods as a witness this morning and specifically now? I will ask him a second time. Sir, do you have Dawn Woods available to call as a witness this morning? He's been unmuted though uh, for a while now. We can obviously hear him. I will ask Mr. Brooks a third time for the record. He's finally putting on the right. headphones. Do you, is Dawn Woods in the courthouse available to testify right now? Do you hey, intend hey, to hey, call hold her? Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. For the record, Mr. Brooks only puts on the headphones when he's in the other courtroom. He does not put them on when he's in here. The audio yeah, because, and the visual work I'm just fine in, in that courtroom. When I'm, when, I'm in the, when I'm in the actual courtroom, I can hear. I don't need to be muted. Mr. Brooks's statements that the audio doesn't work when I mute him is simply false. I, I can say nothing about the audio not working, so you need to stop lying on the record. I'm not lying on the record, sir. I've you confirmed. are lying on the record. All right, he is getting, I'm going to mute him once again because now he's raising his voice. Now he's angry. He's thrown the headphones. Um, he certainly does not seem to want to answer any of the questions this court has. I asked him three times if he had any additional witnesses to call. I warned him that if he did not answer that question, he would forfeit his right to call additional witnesses other than perhaps himself. I then specifically asked him about Don Woods because that is the person he indicated he wanted to add to his witness list last week, and I granted his request to do that. Um, I asked him twice 
Um, he did not respond to that. Uh, based upon his failure to respond, based upon this court advising him that if he failed to answer that question, um, he would forfeit his right to present any additional witnesses. Again, other than perhaps himself, um, I'll find that he has forfeited his right to present and call any additional witnesses based upon his conduct in this case. Um, I would uh, direct Mr. Brooks to the case of State versus Anthony, although that squarely dealt with a person's right to call to be themselves a witness in their own case. They talk at length in that case about how rights, even constitutional rights, can be forfeited by conduct. Of course, the right to be present can be forfeited by conduct. That was established in Illinois versus Allen. And then the right to present evidence on your behalf can also be forfeited based upon uh, conduct. Um, although a criminal defendant does have a right to present a defense, doing so must be guided by the rules of evidence, the rules of procedure, and also with respect for the dignity, order, and decorum that is needed in the courtroom. Mr. Brooks has demonstrated this morning that he is not willing to answer simple questions about calling witnesses. Um, he reverts back to raising the issue of subject matter jurisdiction, which as this court has previously found, I believe is simply a distraction tactic, a delay tactic, and a, disrupt, a disruption tactic. Um, when considering that the court must be concerned not only with the defendant's uh, right to present a defense, this court must balance that with um, preservation of dignity, order, and decorum, and the numerous procedural and evidentiary rules that control the presentation of evidence. Um, because in my findings today, uh, Mr. Brooks has been unwilling to answer simple questions regarding the calling of witnesses. Again, I'll find uh, that he has uh, forfeited his right to present further witnesses. Um, I would like to go through a number of advisements with Mr. Brooks regarding his right to testify. Um, I will unmute him for that. I ask Mr. Brooks to put on his headphones if he is unable to hear me and just to be 100% um, safe and secure on the record. I'd ask the bailiffs who are over there to advise him. I'm going to directly be speaking with him, and if he's unable to hear me, to put on the headphones at this point. He's unmuted. I've also been advised by not just the bailiffs who are over there who I can hear through the audio, but also from the clerk who's in that courtroom, through my clerk who's in this courtroom, that the audio is very loud and clear. Mr. Brooks, I would like to go through with you your right to testify and your right not to testify. We are at the stage in the proceedings where it is important that this court conduct a colloquy with you. I will advise you that if you refuse to answer my questions, refuse to acknowledge me, you can forfeit your right to testify on your own behalf. Again, that's State versus Anthony, 2015, Wisconsin, uh, 20. Mr. Brooks, you need to be aware and are so advised that you have a constitutional constitutional right to testify. Did you hear me say that? There's no response by Mr. Brooks and he does not have the headphones on and he has a book in front of him, although I haven't seen a page turn. If you testify, sir, the state has the right to cross-examine you. That means to ask you questions after you give your initial testimony. Did you hear me advise you of that? No response by Mr. Brooks. Sir, you also have a constitutional right not to testify. 
If you decide not to testify, you are further advised that doing so cannot be used against you, and I would so advise the jury. Did you hear me advise you of that? Once again, no response by Mr. Brooks. The decision to testify is for you and you alone to make. Did you hear me say that? There's no response by Mr. Brooks. It's my understanding that Mr. Brooks has the equivalent of a 12th grade education, uh, that he attended school either up to or through 12th grade, and either has a GED or an HSED. Um, there's been some conflicting information on paperwork throughout this case, but I'll find that he does have a high school education. He is currently in custody, um, of course, at the Waukesha County Jail. I'm not aware of any uh, medication that he has been taking. Sir, have you taken any medication within the last 24 hours or any drugs or any alcohol? I'm not receiving a response to that. I'm aware that he's able to read and write English. I would refer back to the record made during my colloquy with him regarding the waiver of counsel and his ability to be aware of rights, his ability to, I made a finding at that point, of his understanding. And based upon his conduct throughout this trial, uh, including the waiver of right to attorney hearing, I'll make a finding that he has the ability and understand he can read, write, and understand the English language. You've been unmuted the entire time, sir. So what are you talking about? Is he talking about subject matter jurisdiction and how you going to uh, verify it on record? So he did, record? he did not answer my question if the record's not clear about whether he's had any drugs, alcohol, or medication within the last 24 hours. Um, I'll ask him, sir, has anyone made any threats against you to influence your decision on whether to testify on your behalf in this trial? Although he turned and said, what did you say? Again, I believe he's fully able to hear this court at this time based upon how the audio is functioning in the other courtroom. He did not respond to that. Has anyone made any promises yeah, to you to influence your decision? You saying. So if you can hear me. I don't hear everything you're saying, and you know I don't hear everything you're saying, so cut the crap. Um, Mr. Brooks has interrupted with very dis disrespectful words at this moment. I believe that he is feigning his inability to hear and that he's done so throughout this case. There's absolutely no indication he puts the headphones on when he wants, he takes them off when he wants to. While in this courtroom, he hasn't had them on. He's only used them while in the other courtroom. But again, I've confirmed multiple times that the audio is loud and clear. Um, and his statements that he can't hear, his statements that when I mute his audio, that it mutes his audio are simply false. So Mr. Brooks, have you made... Am I still, am I still unmuted? You are, sir. And I'll make a so, record that per so the lieutenant just, over in the other courtroom, the volume is two to, to three times louder than it is in this saying, courtroom. You need to stop making false records saying that I said I can't hear you at all. I said I have trouble hearing you when I'm over here. That's what I said. So I would appreciate if you would make the record clear and correct. Clearly, he heard me say that for him to make that distinguishing yeah, I'm statement. Sitting, I'm sitting right so, here. Don't you see me looking all up to the, to the microphone so you can hear me? I don't have or an issue you hearing you at all, right sir. Here? Can you hear me when I'm right here? I can. Once again, per the lieutenant uh, who went, who's been in both of these courtrooms, the volume in the adjacent courtroom where Mr. Brooks is at is two to three times louder than it is in this courtroom. Um, Mr. Brooks, have what you made a decision? What about this courtroom? Have you made a decision to testify in this case? No. Have you made a decision to testify? I will ask you again, sir. Have you made a decision to testify in this case? Have you made a decision to address subject matter jurisdiction? Have you made a decision to be, to be impartial? To answer what your name is? 
the answer if you have a claim against me. I'm going to mute him for the moment just because, once again, he's attempting to divert away from what this court needs to do by going through the proper colloquy with him regarding his right to testify. He is asking me about subject matter jurisdiction. He's making statements about this court that are disparaging and about my oath. Again, a clear attempt, in my opinion, to simply stall these proceedings and to disrupt them. Um, I will unmute him and I will ask him for a third time with the understanding that if he fails to answer the question in the affirmative, I will interpret his failure to respond as a no and that he is not going to testify. So once again, I am unmuting him. Sir, have you made a decision on whether to testify in this case? There's no response by Mr. Brooks. I will ask it yet another way, sir. Do you want to testify on your behalf in this case? Yes, you have been. Sir, do you want to Sir, do you want to testify in this case? You just said you was mute me when I had the headphones on just a minute ago. You just said you was mute me. So when have I become unmuted? Or I have or did you even mute me in the first place? Mr. Brooks, I'm asking you one last time. You do you want to nothing because you I haven't heard nothing that you asked. So how you gonna ask me something and then take and then just answer for me? Mr. Brooks, do you want you to testify? All right, I'm you going to answer. answer I'm going to you meet him again. Again, it's this. It is very clear to this court that he uses the statement that I can't, that he can't hear, as a means to delay. It's a distraction. It's very evident that he hears this court and that he's choosing to willfully not answer this court.